Hey there, uh, this is Nat and Paul. You probably remember them from previous videos, very popular videos, because they do a great job of explaining geology. They're both geologists. And I asked them where they wanted to go this year, and they said they wanted to come to Mark Lewandowski's property, which I brought you to earlier this year. And why did you want to come here? So this seems like a place where we can take a look at some of the glacial geology of this part of Michigan. And uh, I just wanted to check that out. It seems like this has been kind of a mystery to you and Mark both about what's going on here. And so we thought maybe we could add a little insight. Yeah, there are a lot of rocks here and uh, be interesting to find out why. So you guys mm -hmm. are going to help us with that. Yes, we are. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Mark just arrived and has given us a little tour of the property and his side-by-side. -side. So where are we heading, Mark? Oh, we're gonna go catch a few different things that I think are interesting. There's pockets of sand and there's pockets of uh, small stone, like beach pebbles. And so we're just gonna go look at different things and Sounds... see what the experts have to say. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. This is our first stop is The Rock that the property is named after. It's huge. All right, so you guys have an idea what we might be standing on here? Yeah, so this rock is uh, Gabbro, which is an intrusive igneous rock, meaning it cooled and solidified underground, which is why the crystals can grow bigger. And the crystals you're seeing in here are dark pyroxene and a little bit of lighter feldspar, plagioclase feldspar. And uh, this would have been a magma chamber under Earth's surface. Um, and what gabbro is, it's chemically the same as basalt. So that magma chamber could have been feeding basalt lava eruptions at the surface. All right, Nat. You stopped us here, why is that? All right, well, the first thing I wanted to just say is that as we're driving around the landscape, I can tell this is a recent glacial landscape just by, um, just by the way it looks and the swamps and the ridges. And then we were driving past here and what we're looking at here, this is a classic example of till. And till is material dropped directly from glacial ice as that ice melts. And till is gonna be very unsorted. And that means we have bigger rocks and medium-sized rocks and little ones and sand and mud. And that's because ice, when it melts, just drops everything that was stuck in the ice. If it was water that deposited this, it would be sorted. The rocks or the sand would all have approximately the same size. So definitely a glacier was here and dropped this off. So we're standing on a bunch of limestone here. Some great fossils, it's a gastropod and uh, some sort of corals. So what do you think about all this broken limestone? So this is a good place um, that's a little bit of a mystery. And I have a question here whether this limestone is just sitting on top of the bedrock and it's just broken up bedrock, or if maybe the glaciers pushed this here from a short distance away, because this is very similar to lots of the Michigan Basin rocks we would expect to have here. And right now, I, I don't know, but uh, sometimes we have to say that in geology. So one thing that's typical of places where you've had glaciers are these giant boulders left behind. And uh, we call them erratics. And an, an erratic is a rock that was picked up by the ice and then dropped off. And they can be any where from you know a little cobble to a big boulder. They can have traveled anywhere from uh, a short distance to hundreds of miles. But uh, erratics I always think are interesting because they're rocks that have been on a journey. All right, so this might look kind of like a boring area, but there's a lot of interesting geology that's actually a little bit difficult to interpret. So I'm standing in an area where it's a lot sandier, very different from some of the previous places that we've been standing. And uh, we are actually above 
the uh, level of the of current Lake Huron, which would be about the level of Lake Nipissing, a, a previous higher glacial lake. And when you have shorelines, you often have better sorted material, not the jumbles of rock like we were seeing. And so I'm, I'm starting to wonder if we aren't standing on an ancient beach deposit from Lake Nipissing. But the big problem that I'm having here is uh, there's a lot of green stuff and I haven't actually mapped out this area. And in geology, we really need to look not just at the rocks and the sediment in one place. We have to take a look at how laterally extensive it is, what the shape of it is, uh, and all of that helps us interpret exactly how this area formed. So if we look in this area, a lot of the rocks are what we call clast supported, which means the rocks are sitting on top of each other. They're not separated by sand or mud, which we call matrix supported. Now in a moraine where ice drops off the sediment, you usually get this very unsorted matrix supported material. When you have stuff that looks like this, where it's clasped supported and notice the rocks are better sorted. They're all kind of the same size. That's more indicative of water dropping it off because water can only carry certain sizes of sediment. And again, unfortunately, I can't say much about what kind of water, whether this was a beach or part of a river, because from a very small area, it's hard to get a, an overall um, environmental interpretation, but definitely something a bit different from the other material we've seen around here. So far, we've been looking at surficial, surface deposits left behind by the glaciers, sand, gravel, stuff like that. But behind me, there's some bedrock. So what we're looking at behind us here, this we've been in Dundee limestone in, in the quarry back here, I guess quarry marks rocks. But out here along US 23, we're seeing outcrops of bedrock up here, that's Travers Group. And both of them are Middle Devonian, about 380 million years old. What's special about here though is, is that out here you can find more fossils, more fossils than what you're kind of used to in a uh, Michigan Rocks video, horn corals, uh, sponges, probably a few Petoskey stones here and there. Um, unlike what we saw in the, you know, in Mark's Rocks area where it's mostly just more like uh, Babasites and things like that. So what we have here is a fantastic laboratory of glacial sediments. And uh, this would, I would consider this a ground moraine for the most part. As the ice receded, it dropped all kinds of sediment. And that's why you have such a diversity of, of different rocks that were carried here and then just dropped off by the glacier. But unfortunately, there's a limited amount that we can do just looking at the surface, especially in summertime with all the green right, stuff. Right, yep. <laughs> uh, but I mean, this would be a fantastic place for someone to look in more detail and see like, what exactly is the sand? Is that what we call outwash? Could it be uh, as meltwater flowed over the area it left the sand behind? Or could it be a beach from uh, Lake Nipissing? And without doing more studies, it's hard to tell that. Right. But this has just been a fantastic place to see the hills and the little swamp holes that are left behind by glaciers and uh, just enjoy fantastic geology. Thank you for letting us yeah, you're uh, welcome. look at this. I appreciate I really... you guys coming yeah. out. It's, I learned a lot and uh, it's just pretty neat to, to know how it happened. I appreciate yeah. any time I get to look at some interesting geology. Right. Yeah. And Mark, uh, if people want to buy rocks from you, you got them for sale, right? Yes. So yeah. we'll, we'll leave your number and uh, you sell big quantities, small quantities, whatever anybody wants, right? Right. Yep. All right. So then that number will be in the description.